Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Touring Australia. We've got our 120 Pride up on the hoist. Just want to show you a little bit of uh, some of the, not damage, but you can see the, the front bash plate. You can't see a lot of marks on actually, because I'm quite a careful driver to purposely not hit it too much, but you can see a few hits and scrapes that they get and how they, you can see there's a bit more of a hit there. So you, you, even if you're careful, you do cop a little bit, helping protect that sump. Transmission generally, it's raised higher, so nothing really goes near there unless you're a really bad driver. These hang-ups, this is what we call the hang-ups. These scrape quite a bit there. You can see the scrape marks. It'll be the same on both sides, right? On a vehicle that gets used off-road. These little things from K-On are really awesome to help protect the heads of the bolts for when you need to take those off. You can get a transmission um, guard if you like also. Uh, but the other main one that... Look, we see a lot of these Prados up on the hoist and the damage. And generally the transfer case here doesn't get touched on the Prados either. Um, sometimes on the Hilux as being a longer wheelbase. You can see how, you know, maybe some grass and things have sort of scuffed past it, taken a bit of paint off. But there's not actually one dent on that anywhere. And this fuel tank guard's pretty good and that's because it's been replaced. Um, it's been repaired, like the previous one got repaired a number of times. but. And I'm very careful, it's been used for mainly touring lately, but we're going to go back into doing some of the harder tracks again. So before we do so, it is a plastic fuel tank, what's up in behind there, which is hard to demonstrate at the moment. We'll get this cover off and show you. It is a plastic tank behind there, and this is just a bit of a, you know, token gesture, tin sort of guard. Um, there's quite a lot of um, where it's been pushed in along here even on sand and stuff like that they regularly get, this one is in really good condition but i can tell you from looking under the prados if there was one guard after your front sump bash plate to add on it'd be this fuel tank guard so that's exactly what we're doing we've got a guard for that fuel tank from Khan. we're about to uh install it so we'll show you how that's done and what it looks like afterwards remembering i haven't installed one of these uh fuel tank guards before it's not what we do we don't install accessories so we can only try and help you by showing on our own vehicles. Uh, so we've got the guard here. That comes with some basic instructions, but hopefully by the end of this, you won't have to read the instructions. There's three brackets you need to install. It's pretty obvious. You can look at the picture there and see that it's that one. I'm not sure if the nuts or bolts are meant to go either way, but I thought I'd put the nuts on the outside of the guard so then I can see where things are at, I suppose. That was my thinking. Um, the long one goes at the rear on the inside. This is the outside, and there's should be six longer 25 M8 by 25 bolts left um, to go there, 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 and in those three brackets. We're also going to go to the vehicle now and show you how to remove the old fuel so tank. Might as well start off with the hardest one first. So let's go to the back above the tail shaft. See that, that 12 mil bolt right there in the middle of the picture. Right, and so that one can come out. That's probably maybe not the hardest one. Let's just get a long extension to reach it. There's one hidden behind the tail shaft. See that one there? That could be your hardest one, maybe. It's not that hard. Maybe a ratchet spanner ratcheting from the rear end over this side over there. And that's the only two at that side. Then you come around this side, then your rear one, it goes up. So just in, it's right next to our remote reservoir there. Right, let me try and get the right angle there. There you go, middle of the picture with a bolt. Right, not the one on the left. You want to drop the whole, that's the whole fuel tank strap. You want to do that. The one a bit higher up, you can see middle of the picture right in line with the end of the sway bar link. Right, that one there. And then there's one, two, three in a row. So we're going to pop those three plus three, 12 mils out and drop this fuel tank guard down. So just use the long extension to get that one out, right? And as I said, ratchet spanner up behind here. Ratcheting obviously towards the back gives you a bit more room than towards the front in the grease and whatever So it's going to keep going on that one. Maybe I should concentrate on the tools not the camera and Once you've got that bolt out there, right, you can see it's out. The whole thing's just sort of hanging there By the bolts at this side. Okay, I'm doing left-handed videoing and right-handed tools. Let's see if this works out That's the action. Okay, after all the action, there it is. Uh, pretty easy to get off. Like I said, it all depends how bent and damaged yours is. All the more reason to replace it. If you're not replacing it, you should probably remove it and do some maintenance. I'll show you what happens. So these rocks that are sitting in there, right? 
this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. These ones here and the rubbing there, right? You should take that off if you do tracks and stuff periodically, give it a clean out. There's quite a big one there. Right, we better have a look at the tank. We have a tank inspection now. Right, you just want to have a look, see where, where even these, once they get bent, see how it's just run. Like these, they're plastic, they're very tough, but you want to protect it, yeah? Have a decent guard on it. So I'm just going to give it a quick inspection, make sure all these places anything's been rubbing. So you get a, a sharp rock pushing into there, not good, but that's okay. I'm going to have a look off camera, I can't see too much at the moment. I'm only trying to show you. I'll just show you, you know, that's not too bad either. And that's just water, don't worry about that, because it's a bit of a wet day, it's been driven. Um, so yeah, we'll just give it all a bit of a clean up and then we'll get an assistant to help lift up that guard and get the calm one up there, show you what it looks like. I've made a mess of these six bolts in preparation, spraying a bit of lithium spray grease. I like the stuff, keeps everything wet and lubed as you put it in. Some people like to use other products, um, you can use whatever you want, you can put them in dry if you want, but for me it's just lube it up and a bit of rust prevention and keep it lubed and it's just psh, Done. If you want, you can also make some mess under here and spray some CRC or something in the hole. Just kind of using it to wash the threads out a little bit, if you know what I mean. Blasting any dirt and stuff like that off it more than anything, right? But it's not a big deal. You don't have to do it, but you can see that's what I did. I'm kind of using it to clean the threads and just a bit of cleaning and lubrication, sort of a bit of a flush out, if you know what I mean. All right, so there it is kind of sort of, but I haven't, it's just finger tight. We just lifted it up. I got an assistant to help me lift it up. What I did, I left all these brackets loose as well to make it even easier. So there I can tighten those up later. So they're actually loose for a bit of movement there. That one, you know, you can see it's just sitting there loose still. I haven't tightened anything up, right? They're all just literally, you know, that one's sitting there. So is that. They're all just, you know, they're just literally they're all just starting. Guess what? They all started really easy because it's a quality k product. And, uh, you know, things just work. So let's tighten it all up and then we've got that to protect our fuel tank. Happy days. So first I tightened up all of these. One, two, three. Not necessarily in this order. All evenly in many passes. That one up there, four. And when I tightened up this one, all right, the one behind the tail shower, I push the bracket up, it's got a bit of adjustment in it and I want it up as far as I can personally so I've tightened that one and the one at the back, I've still got these loose, right, these ones at the back here because I figured there may be a bit of movement up and down, like, okay, see this one, it can move, it allows for a bit of tolerance, it's probably going to be all the way up, I was just having a look around in here just to show you. Believe it or not, there's a perfect amount of clearance in there, you know, it's just k -on. it's hard to show you, but look at that, that is just k -on beautiful, I've got to tell you, there's, so it varies, I mean the f plate is fairly flat, but it varies to the tank, but it's got clearance all the way, and without wasting, because you don't want to be too low, you don't want to have your, your guard like, you know, down, down here, because you're going to lose an inch clearance, right? But you don't want it rubbing, although rubbing a little bit probably wouldn't matter, but I can tell you looking in there, you might not be able to see, but I can see it goes to about minimum 5 mil, even with me pushing that up at that side. So it's just another bloody awesome product. So I'm going to tighten up the rest of these other bolts now, and we'll just have a look at the finished right, product. So now we've got the matching set. Look at this. Beautiful. And I've got to tell you, there's just some really awesome things about this design. It's got these nice water mud crap drain holes they're a decent size without losing any strength so you got one two three along that side and one two at this side now it's closed in at the front because that's how the standard one is giving it the protection from the rocks from the front of the vehicle okay so that it's got the edge there that little bit of an edge there okay but at the back so all the rubbish can run straight off the back. It doesn't need protection at the back edge. So there's no back edge there. Look at that, is that a smart design or what? I'm trying to show you in there, but, right? All the rubbish can, and the other thing is, see, the highest point, which it's hard for you to see, but I'll try and demonstrate from back here. The highest point is the middle. So it's kind of like runs off to the side. So anything that wants to run out, it's gonna run out to the sides here. Look at that, that's just perfect. I'm really happy with that. Another awesome product. Thank you very much, kon.com.au guys, awesome products, if you haven't already subscribed, turn the bell on here, 
I'm going to show you more of this and there's going to be a lot of action out on the tracks. So we're going to test this out and um, get some uh, views underneath it out on the tracks. Probably get a few scrapes and scratches in it. Bada bing. We're out of here. Please give us a thumbs up. That's how to fit it. Pretty straightforward. It was very easy. No complications at all whatsoever. And as I said, I put the uh, nuts on the outside so it's easy to see them and know that they're there still and or tighten them up as necessary. You can put Loctite if you want, but I just went F tight without wrecking them. Quite happy with that. Quite happy with the design. I can't even, usually I like to pick out ways to make things a little bit better. At the moment, this is looking real good. Initially, I, when I got, I thought, oh, no drain holes in the bottom, but I can see why maximum strength. You don't want sticks and rocks scraping along here and going, <coughs> and you're getting hung up on it. So it's a really good smooth finish and the drain holes are at the side. So bada bing, I'm out of here, see ya.